while you're standing, let's go straight to the word of the Lord. Let's grab our Bibles and we do honor our chief overseer and pastor of this great church and to our assistant pastor, my brother and friend, and to state elders, presiding elders, all of you in your respective positions. We thank you for receiving us on today. Let's go to the Synoptic Gospel, John, the fifth chapter. Hallelujah. Be lifting up two, two verses, five and six. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. You can follow along in whatever version you have. Somebody say, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. When you have it indicated by shouting, yes, Lord, if you need more time, say, wait on me. Yes, Lord. Sounds like everyone's there. The Synoptic Gospel, John, the fifth chapter, yeah. verses five and six. New Revised Standard Version says, one man was there who had been ill for 38 That's years. Right. Somebody say 38 years. 38. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? All right. Amen. In the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart, we accepted our sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, do it again in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 On your way down to your seat, just tell somebody, this is my last year like this. Amen. Your holler and somebody sitting behind you. Say, neighbor, this is my last time. This is my last year like this. You might want to tweet that. You might want to put it on Facebook, Instagram. This is my last year like this brothers and sisters the Lord has gathered us here as we are preparing to march into the newness and possibilities of 2024 we are marching under the theme this year it's going to be a year of renewal and I need for us to get that in our minds get that in your soul because if you're going to be an effective believer you cannot stay where you are going to be comfortable. All right. You cannot always stay in your comfort zone. Sometimes, sometimes you have to renew yourself. Yes. Whatever you have, whatever, whatever you have stopped, whatever you have paused, whatever you have given up on, every dream that you have tried to let go of, put it back on the burner. God told me to tell you, grab it again, because this is your last year living in that area. <laughs> last year being stuck in that area. This is your last year not fulfilling everything God has for you. Shout as loud as you can. 24 is going to be a year of renewal. I like this energy because this is what's going on in the text. This is his last year like this. This man who had dealt with a disease. Some scholars say it was a palsy and he had dealt with it for 38 years. He dealt with this same thing for 38 years. He was not at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. No, we don't know how long he was there. But Jesus walks up on the scene. <laughs> Jesus knows in his divinity he's been at the pool long enough. But we have no proof that he's been there for 38 years. But what he's suffering with, he's been dealing with it for 38 years. I need 
need you to hear me this, this afternoon. 30, 38 years of, of not being able to move like you want to move. 38 years of depending on other people for your stability and your functionality. 38 years of having to wake up not being able to experience life the way others are able to experience life. He's been dealing with this. For 38 years. I need you to understand something that whenever you are introduced to a person with a malfunction or disease in the Bible, and it includes how many years it's been, it's really underscoring how bad the situation is. It's underscoring how hopeless the case is. Then you go to Matthew, Matthew's gospel, chapter 9, verses 20 and 22, and you hear about the woman with the issue of blood. She's been dealing with that for 12 years. When you go to Luke, chapter 13, verse 11, it talks about a woman who was bent over. She was bent over for 18 years. When you go to Acts, chapter 4, verses 22, and you're introduced to that man who was sitting by the gate called beautiful and Peter and John were able to help him up and said silver and gold have I none but such as we have we give it unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ rise up and walk you want to tell somebody this is my last year being like this mm. Well, in verses 22 of Acts chapter 4, we learn that the brother was over the age of 40, which means he's been dealing with it more than 40 years. Acts chapter 9, verses 33, you meet a man who was named Anidas and, and who had been bedridden for about eight years. Whenever you see the years, the Bible is showing us how hopeless it was. And it's hopeless for this brother. 38 years. He's been in the same place. 38 years. He's dealing with the same situation. But Jesus walked up on him. And when Jesus walks up on you, I don't care how long it's been. I don't care how stuck you've been. I don't care what kind of oppression, discrimination. Racism, sexism, you've been dealing with when Jesus enters your story. You want to be able to declare whatever this is. This is my last year like this. Because when Jesus shows up, all things become new. Would you look at this brother? Look at this brother. He's been dealing with oh, uh, opinions from the church. Oh, y'all got to hang out for, with me for a little while. He's dealing with the opinions from the church. He's been dealing with oppression from the culture. He's been put out of the community. And he has obstacles from his condition. I need you to hear this. He's dealing with opinions from the church because according to Leviticus chapter 21, if you are blind, if you are maimed, if you have crooked feet, if you have any physical abnormality, the church thought that something was wrong with you. Mm. Yeah, the church folks. They thought something was wrong with you spiritually. That's why when you hear in the Gospels about the blind man, they, 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 they hushed him. They told him, be quiet, brother man. We don't want to hear your noise. Because they believed that he had a physical difference. They, they, that he had something that was deficient, deficient about you, the church brother more than his physical condition because people's opinion about you if you're not careful can keep you bound more than anything physical the 
church was mm. the church did them wrong because you have to be careful about how people talk to you and how they even treat you in the place that you worship but you ought to just tell somebody this is my last year living like this this is my last year being in this circumstance this is my last year being in this situation this is my last year this is my last year crying over this situation this is my last year Dealing with this pain. This is my last year. Having to moan and groan over church folks that can care less even about you or about your family. But I'm here to tell you on this last Sunday of the year, I give God the praise. I give God glory. Because if He did it before, He would do it again. If you want to be made 
of the text, yeah. Bishop. This man is at the pool. Yeah. But Jesus is on his way to a festival. See, while we're going through our storms and going through our situation, we don't realize that Jesus is already on the way. I dare you to touch about two people around you and tell them Jesus is on the way. Jesus is on the way. Jesus is on the way. So, so, so why? 
all he's at the pool of Bethesda, which, is, which means house of mercy. He, he's laying at the house of mercy. But he doesn't realize that Jesus is about to show up on the scene. And the only reason why he's coming is because it's a festival. And he's a Jew. And that was a part of the culture to go to the festival. That's why I keep coming to church because I don't know when he's going to show up. But I keep coming to the festival. So because Jesus comes to the festival, now he's able to deal with a situation that they thought was over. I just came to prophesy to about 50 people in this house that your, your struggle is over. Because this is the last year of you living like this. This is the last year. I don't care how long it's been. I don't care how long you've been in your storm. You've been in your situation. Because Jesus is on the scene. And because Jesus is on the way. When he comes, everything changes. When he shows up, what was, what was disconnected now becomes connected. How do I know? Because it went to the valley of dry bones. They were scattered. It was hopeless. They thought there was no life in it. And all of a sudden, Yeah, he's old. I walk. 